I reckon I could have laid down there and rolled around and did my part. Hallelujah. That's about all I could have done. But partnership will get stuff done. It will give you the ability to increase, to multiply. God said, He spoke over man and woman. Be fruitful. It's the will of God. And I'm not going to preach here but just a second. But God will never tell you to do what you're not able to do. Amen. God will never ask you for something He's not giving you the ability to do. What does that mean? Trinity Family Worship Center has the ability to be fruitful. Hallelujah. You have the ability on the inside of each of you to be fruitful. God's asked you to do it and He's equipped you to do it. Hallelujah. Partnership will also bring you victory in the battle. I remember in Genesis 14 where it talks about Abraham and his nephew Lot. In Genesis 14, 13 it says, Then one who had escaped came and told Abraham the Hebrew, For he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eskel and brother of Aner. And they were allies or partners with Abram. Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his house and went in and pursued them as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night. And he as his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Oba, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods. And he brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as the women and the people. Now if we back up, we find... Lot and Abraham's herdsmen arguing over stuff. And I want to tell you that stuff is just a part of the blessing of God. It is not the blessing of God. The blessing of God is salvation. The blessing of God is the Holy Ghost. The blessing of God is the assured that I'm a part of the family of God. And if you ever forget about that, you'll end up like Lot and his herdsmen arguing over stuff. Oh, it's not a new battle. They're still doing it in churches all over America. When the church grows, it's blessed. Everybody wants a part of the stuff. But I want to tell you about the stuff. Abraham had the stuff. And he knew that the, the God that gave him the stuff was bigger than the stuff. Hallelujah. Why? Because Abraham and Lot, Lot said, Uncle Abraham, the herdsmen are fighting. What should we do? And Abraham could have said, Boy, shut up and let me handle it because you didn't have nothing when I adopted you. But he didn't. He said, this is how we're going to settle it. You choose what you want, and I'll take whatever's left over. Why did he do that? Because he had a realization that the God who had given him the stuff was bigger than the stuff, and anywhere he found himself, he was blessed. Hallelujah. So Abraham chose what looked good. And, I mean, excuse me, Lot chose what looked good, and Abraham took the rest. But where do we find Abraham? Resting under the terebinth tree, blessed and taken care of. Listen to me. Sometimes you need to let go ahead and let somebody have the stuff and trust that the God who brought you to where He brought you will bless you no matter where you find yourself. Amen. Abraham realized that he had partnered with the kingdom. And that meant that wherever the soles of his feet touched, he was going to be blessed. So now we find Abraham resting in the blessings of God. And where do we find Lot captured? He's captured and he's taken, he's taken into captivity, but Abraham still loves it. Listen to me, some of you got some family like Lot. They know better, they've been taught better, but they're still out there in a mess. Hallelujah. And some of you got to get with the church and get to praying and fasting. Hallelujah. Because you don't have enough in yourself to do it, but together you can pray them through. Hallelujah. And Abraham didn't go to war by himself. You read the account. He said his friends went with him. Hallelujah. And they recovered everything. See, Abraham hadn't grown to the significance that God told him he was going to grow to. Grow to. He only had 318 armed men at the time. But the other guys got on board. The, the people in the town where he was, in the city where he was, they, they liked Abraham and they were going, they were allies, our friends, our partners. And what Abraham could not do himself, he had some friends and some allies and some partners that joined the forces and won the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? 
Sometimes there's things that you can't fight on your own. I didn't. I tell you, I can't. I can testify all weekend and not tell all of my testimony. Told you last night about how I dealt with pornography in my past, and I remember that was a struggle for me because I was trying to fight it on my own. You know, I was shame. I was in Bible college studying to be a preacher, and here I was struggling with uh, the hidden sin of pornography. And, and it was a battle, and I was trying to fight it on my own. And I'm saying this tonight because partnership brought me out. Because God spoke to me, and He said, I, I want you, you've been fighting this long enough. You've got to go and talk to this preacher. And I said, Lord, I can't go to no preacher and talk about my mess. I'm not going to do it. The Lord just began to deal with me and said, you got to do it. If you, I want to tell you, there's some things that some of us struggle with that if we'll get some godly partners, hallelujah, if we'll get some people on our side, it'll make us stronger. And I remember I finally got sick enough of being in sin. And I went to this preacher and I said, Preacher, I've got trouble and I've been bound up and I need deliverance. He said, Son, I love you. And I know what you're talking about. He said, Do you see this rubber band on my wrist? I said, yes, sir. He said, that rubber band serves as a reminder that I'm free from pornography. That I've been through the same battle that you're going through. What do you mean? God took me to somebody that can help me. Hallelujah. You don't just need to go and tell everybody your stuff, but God will send you. If you get to the point you need a partner, He'll send you to the right partner. Hallelujah. That will be there for you. And you can win the victory if you do it together. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Partnership will also bring you favor in finances in times of need. First Corinthians 16 says in verse 2, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the church of Galatia, so you must do also. Now I want to stop right here. A lot of our churches, and we talked about finances, I really hadn't planned on talking about finances this weekend, Except for tonight if we went to this message. But we talked about finances in a lot of churches. I've been in the ministry just over 12 years. A short time and I've already figured out people don't like talking about money. But I want to tell you, the preacher, the evangelist, the prophet, the apostle, the teacher has more than a right to talk and teach on money. I have a New Testament scripture where the apostle Paul himself not only took up an offering... But commanded. I said he commanded. He told them that they better have it in order when he got there. Now we don't even want our preacher to tell us that we need to tithe. But the word of God says that the preacher didn't just tell them to tithe. But this was above the tithe. This was an offering for the poor. And he said, as I commanded the other church to do, I'm commanding you. Whoa, that's deep. But it's biblical, hallelujah. What is that saying? That's saying if God gives Bishop a vision and, and he comes and he brings it to the house, then you don't have to pray about it. He's been assigned as the Bishop, hallelujah, and you need to line up with the man of God. Let's take that a step over. Pastor, it's, it's got that same authority, that same anointing. If God puts something on his heart, if it doesn't go against the confines of the Word of God, then you need to do what God's saying in the house. Amen. That's what partnership is. Amen. Everybody can't get the vision. Everybody can't get the plan. Amen. So we've got to follow the leaders and do what the leaders have from the heartbeat of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all an issue of trust anyway. Do I trust God? You know, even if my leader goes astray, if I'm trusting God, then I still do what the leader says to do because I trust God to straighten the leader out. Because after all, the Word says He's the God that raises up and He's the God that sits down. Amen. Hallelujah. So you don't have to try. I call it the church police. You don't have to represent God and arrest the preacher or the bishop or the teacher. You just need to let the Holy Ghost do his job. Partnership. Your part, if you haven't been called to leadership, your part is to do what the house is doing. To be a part. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help us. He said, so you must do also. Come on, I see must. 
Let me look in my King. That's new King James. I want to look at the, the King James. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 16 and 2. I want to make sure we're getting the words right. If I had time, I'd go back to the original Hebrew. On the first day of the week, let every one of you lay aside a store where God has promised that there be no gatherings when I come. I've given order to the churches in Galatia, even so do you. Same thing, just a little different. It's what I've told them to do, I need you to do. Let's move on, preacher. Because there's more here. On the first day of the week, let each one. Who's supposed to be given in the collection? Everybody. Partnership. Partnership has more to do than just, I think the pews ought to be blue. Well, hallelujah. Come on. Partnership has more to do with, I think the floor ought to be restained, or I think we need carpet on the floor. I tell you, I've been in so many business meetings when I was a young man in the assembly of God that we don't even have business meetings anymore except for faith. Now y'all do whatever God leads y'all to do, but every business meeting I ever been to, one group of people left happy and one group of people left mad. I want you to know it should not be so. God's got a leader in the house that ought to be left by the Holy Ghost and everybody else ought to follow. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't want to do it that way anymore because we live in America, the kingdom of democracy. I love it. I thank God for it. But we're not in a democracy. We're in a theocracy. The king is king. He's Lord. He's got a government in the church. And if we'll do it his way, we won't leave angry. Amen. We won't leave mad. Come on. We'll say, you know what? I'm praying for that preacher. Yes. And we'll say it within ourselves and not so discord in the church. Amen. Oh, I could preach right there too because it's needed. I don't know about here, but it's needed all over the body. On the first day of the week, let each of you lay aside something. Once again, this is not tithe, this is your offering. Storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. But I want to turn this thing around. Because, because the point is, partnership will bring you finances in time of need. You know what we tell people when they come to the church looking for, for, for their light bill to be paid? When they look for their water bill to be paid, when they look for groceries, if we can, we try to help when we can. But we're, we're a church a little bit larger than you all, probably about the same. I mean, we're just about on the same level. So we're not able to pay everybody's light bill in the city. And we're not able to pay everybody's water bill and buy everybody groceries. But what we do say is, where is your church family? Yeah. Yeah. Where is your church home? Have you been faithful to your church? Well, why do you want to know about that, preacher? Because if you'd been here, and you'd have been faithful to this house, right. and you'd have been doing what you're supposed to, and you come up in need, we'd go out and get a second job if we had to, you to help you, because you're family, hallelujah. And in the family, we help each other. So if you're doing what you're supposed to, in your time of need, the family will do what it takes to help you. Hallelujah. Partnership will bring you the help. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Right. So if you sow help to the needy, in your time of need, guess what's going to happen? The church is going to help you. Right. Hallelujah. Be faithful. Do what's right. And watch God bless you. 90% of the time you'll never have to come to the church because God always takes care of His. Yeah. Hallelujah. Partnership. Partnership. 